been a year where we've been overwhelmed with heartache and heartbreak. We've still been blessed with so much good. Week after week, Wednesday nights at 10, we've delivered the goods, and tonight is no different. Happy New Year, everyone. I'm Doug Warner. Tonight, we have a special half hour of the good stuff of 2020. So many inspirational moments from all across the Arklatex that I've been proud to share with you. First up, and he should be first up, is Matt Brothers. This past year, high school graduates, well, they were dealt a tough hand, weren't they? School graduations like this one at Magnolia School of Excellence forced to get a little creative with a drive through graduation. What brings you to tears? Just wanting better for them, knowing that he pushed through. But how about those seniors at Stanley High School who have found a creative way to share their love for the last dozen years? Outside Stanley High School along Highway 84, you can't miss the banners blowing in the wind. I get to see my face. Yeah, I <laughs> feel good. The proud faces of seniors like Brennan LaFleur and Justin Glaze. You, you wait for pre-K, dreaming of this moment. It's a dream that carries you all the way to your senior graduation. We yeah. literally skipped the last day of school. Yeah, we skipped them We're now. never going to school again. That I did not know the other day when I called Brennan's mother. I guess you have a high school senior. I do. I wanted to ask her about the banners in front of the school. We're proud of our kids. We're proud of our seniors. And we thought it would be a nice gesture. But it was pretty obvious this was about more than just a nice gesture. 19 seniors and one extra banner for a young man who by school standards didn't officially make the grade. It's natural to put him in there with the rest of them. Because to the rest of them. I think about it every day. It'll be something every day. There's not a day they don't think about life with him. A six year old named Bryce Norwood. Living across the street from him. Uh, you know, that was my best friend at the time. That time, some 14 years ago, when they were just pre-K students at Stanley. Once they become a part of you, you're like a family. Their preschool teacher was Karen Welburn. He touched so many lives and so many people in so many ways. Pretty impressive for a little four-year-old with mighty big dreams. He had asked me one time, he's like, Mom, can you be a professional baseball player, a doctor, and a teacher? He wanted to do all three, and I'm like, well... Uh... Bryce's mother, Alicia, tells me he was only three days into the start of pre-K that fall when Bryce's fast-moving dreams were suddenly paused. You never know what tomorrow holds, so never take one day for granted. Bryce was diagnosed with a rare form of childhood cancer. Instead of fun in the classroom, it was long stays at St. Jude's Children's Hospital in Memphis. The entire time he was away fighting for his life. I mean, they're four, and they don't understand the the brevity of what could, what can happen, and they just knew that they loved Bryce. The class sent get well cards. It counted the days until Bryce's return. I remember like it was yesterday. I went up to him and hugged him, and I was like. Bryce, where'd your hair go, buddy? These two even shaved their heads for their friend for life. I held off my toilet paper snow day in the classroom until he could get there because I wanted him to have a memory. Every year on the first day of school, after dropping the kids off, I would go over and I would sit there, you know, and imagine the parents taking their kids in for the first day of school. And every year, when the family takes their first day of school picks, Bryce was there. The little slugger who wore number 11 for his older brother Zach and younger sister Mia, Bryce was there. And each and every year at school. Even though he's not here, he's still part of them and everything they do. His classmates wore red every Valentine's Day in remembrance of the day Bryce passed away. And these trees were planted on the playground. I could always look back and say, that's, a, that's Bryce, that's Bryce's trees. And a year ago, at their junior ring ceremony, those kids carried Bryce right up to that podium. I thought yesterday about you and days before that too. They presented Alicia with this fitting keepsake. God has you in his arms, I have you in my heart. It means everything to a mom that your kid is still thought of and they're still loved. 
for these graduating seniors. You just think every day what he would be like. And the parents and teachers at Stanley High. Because he's a part of us. He's a part of this community. No doubt, this little kid earned this spot right alongside the graduating class of 2020. When those kids walk across that stage, Potter Bryce is walking across that stage. What an amazing difference those students made for Bryce's mother. And what a difference a Bossier Parish teacher made for a number of students with hearing deficiencies during a mask mandate, as you'll find out in the good stuff, loud and clear. For nine-year-old Bailey Berry, even a pandemic isn't going to wreck her fourth grade plans. She dances, she plays piano. She's gonna do everything she wants to do. And she's got the grades to back it up. Truly, for a little girl who relies on more than just ears to hear. Day one in the hospital because of newborn hearing screens. She wasn't passing. Just hours after giving birth to her one and only child, Bailey's mother, Sheena, says it's just not something a parent expects to hear, that your child can't hear. You prepare for a lot of things in pregnancy because you never know what's going to happen. Um, but hearing loss and deafness is not one of them. Is she on, sir? Yes. yes. Okay. But soon after, Bailey's family found reason to celebrate. <laughs> Wasn't a perfect solution. <laughs> yeah. But a cochlear implant gave Bailey her first real shot at listening and one day talking with others. S T. And as she got older, she discovered other ways to share exactly what's on her mind through sign language. And so I can read your lips. And by coupling what she hears with what she sees spoken. She's nine, but she has the hearing age of about a seven and a half year old. Ask Murray. Yet Bailey continued to excel with help from Legacy Elementary, where a number of the district's young students with hearing impairments attend school. But as students began counting down the days to finally returning to the classroom after the long pandemic break, young Bailey quickly realized she'd be faced with a whole new challenge. It had to wear a mask. It was like it can make it can make noise that people can understand you. A mask that covers the very lips she and other students depend on to hear clearly. When they put out the plan and it was third and fourth graders are gonna have to wear a mask. Sheena quickly picked up the phone and called the school. Sheena says their idea, what about masks with a clear plastic shield so the kids could see each other's lips? For Bailey and other students who read lips, what a fantastic idea. But when that specialized mask order went out and clearly wasn't going to arrive on time. The principal came to me and we kind of came up with an idea just uh, getting those masks made for everyone in that classroom or any uh, teacher that is going to be working with Bailey. And any of their students with impaired hearing. This is just one of the different fabrics that I have. Legacy okay. instructional coach Leslie Bailey's part-time side gig suddenly became this Bossier City School's full-time saving grace. Just to clear. And when she got in the car, she was elated. I mean, the, she had the biggest smile on her face. <laughs> Mom, everybody had a mask like me. I could read their lips. Bailey. This moment with these masks isn't only about Bailey and others with a hearing deficiency being able to understand what's being said. Sure, what's the gesture? But for her classmates to understand why it's so important that everyone be included. Uh, my teacher came in and said, this teacher has made special masks for us because somebody in our class really needs them. Like Will Johnson, who went home and bragged to his parents about his first day of school. And he uh, was telling us about the day and then he pulled out this special mask. And know. when his dad then did the same on his U.S. Congressman Mike Johnson Facebook page. And I read that post and I just cried and cried and cried, just happy tears, but I was like, that's, that's about Bailey. Marissa, what do you think for mature? And now others, far beyond Bailey's classroom, know all about. Be good. Uh, and inclusive way Legacy Elementary is choosing to teach its kids. One of those things that we could do um, to make it a little bit easier for that student. And I wish I could go back and look at myself 10 years ago and go, it's gonna be okay, because it is. Yeah. <laughs> 
when we come back on our New Year's Day special, A Year of the Good Stuff, how this young lady was driven to tears. Welcome back as we celebrate a year of the good stuff. There have been some pretty incredible moments I've been happy to share with you throughout the year. Bruce did not say goodbye. Bruce only said good night. I see you in the morning. One of the most touching when longtime UPS worker Bruce Williams of Shreveport passed away in the middle of a pandemic, his co-workers, dozens of them, still found a way to show their respect to Bruce's family. And when you saw his truck, his co-workers there in their uniform with that circle of honor, it just meant so much. You know him. You know him. You love him. You love him. Paul Marshall Jr. And who can forget the young Houghton graduate who had to make a pit stop on the way to his ceremony to let his mother know he had made it to the big day. Mommy, I got something to say. Her last dying words to me was, she just hoped she lived long enough to see him graduate. I, I did, I graduated. I know you, you so proud of me, a happy. Anthony Marshall. And this past spring, when high school baseball teams everywhere realized the pandemic was cutting their seasons off right then and there at the stroke of midnight, the airline Vikings shortened season went down to the very last swing of the bat. I knew this was it. This is going to be my last at bat probably. For that game with Rustin, Bryson and the other seniors knew this was likely their last game ever. As soon as I hit it, I was like, okay, this has got a chance. And with the game tied and two outs in the final inning, it happened. It wasn't about the what ifs and the what could have beens. It was about one of those seniors driving home the winning run before this entire team of men was sent home for good. And from Bossier City to Logansport, where a member of the homecoming court found herself at halftime at midfield without an escort until one of her best friends picked up the phone and called the school's former SRO. Mr. Coleman, Mr. Coleman. Right, so I immediately think something's going on. I'm not sure what it is. And then she asked me, do you have a suit in your truck? I was like, how would an officer have a suit in his car? <laughs> Already ready. <laughs> so it's like, why would I have a suit in my truck, Eladrian? So I knew he wasn't gonna tell me no. Our next sophomore mag is Skylar Jones. But the protector with the badge on this night did just fine, serving one of his former students. I thought it was an honor, like to have a police officer walk me across the thing. Just like old times, Officer Coleman in the right spot at the right time for those students. Right now, we're taking a trip back in time to 1982, a trip that drove a Bossier City principal to tears. It's hard. Parents are special. In a matter of months, pancreatic cancer stole a lifetime of love. And this has really taught me that, you know, the days are numbered and you have to take advantage of every opportunity you can to spend that time with your family. In the days after Tanya Hilburn's grandfather, 80 year old Joseph Burroughs, was laid to rest. Yeah, well. As you can see, he's always had something to work on. You're left holding on to the memories even tighter. He's never threw anything away. You could tell for his son, Joey, that feeling of just walking into his dad's workshop. Very good, very good. Was like popping the emotional top on a can full of endless shop stories. A shop to this day full of tools, parts, and even a car or two still in need of some TLC. But Joseph Burroughs' true pride and joy. The smell, of course, what brought back a lot of memories. Was his 1982 El Camino. It's got a 305 Chevrolet in it. Everyone in the family loved the El Camino, not just me. Maybe so, but Tanya admits she personally put dibs on that car long before she was legally allowed to drive. I don't know why me and that El Camino hit it off <laughs> back in the day. But her grandfather wasn't giving it up. Her 16th birthday came and went, yet those keys stayed in his pocket. We kept saying, you know, no, you don't want that old thing. In fact, the only time that car left his driveway without him was when it was stolen twice. He got it back both times. The rumbling of it brings back so many memories. From but she knew her grandfather always seemed to know best. 
like the time he sat her then fiance down literally minutes before the wedding was supposed to start. He pulled Malcolm out on the church steps and he told him, he said, son, I want you to understand what you're getting yourself into. And promptly offered to fly him anywhere in the world if he had any doubts about marrying his granddaughter. Needless to say, Malcolm didn't leave for the airport. He hung around for the party as well as the next 20 years of marriage. He is the one true love and Papa will do that. The same camera shy Malcolm wasn't about to stand still long enough for me to ask him what happened just a few weeks ago. You see, roughly two years ago, to Tanya's complete surprise, her pawpaw, Joseph, up and sold that El Camino to a distant family member. I was disappointed. I was like, Papa, you knew how much I, I wanted that car. And it's like, oh, baby, you don't want that thing. At nearly 40 years old, that thing wasn't even running. You know, time just went on. I mean, you just move on and you're, you're going on about your daily lives. Time the now principal of Plantation Park Elementary knows is precious. Diagnosed in January, her grandfather lost his battle on September 13th. But like that Lincoln Versus sitting outside his backyard workshop, Joseph Burroughs wasn't done tinkering around just yet. I was having a moment and I don't cry often. <laughs> My husband certainly doesn't like to see me cry. So Malcolm told her to hop in the car, to take a ride, and that he had something he thought would help get her mind off the pain. You see, in the weeks before her grandfather passed away, Malcolm had secretly worked out a deal to buy that El Camino back. And then I see it. A car that hadn't cranked in years. A car he somehow got running again. He's a man of few words. Just a day before her grandfather passed away. You know, I just feel like Papa was a divine intervention in the timing. Like he knew exactly when she really needed that car. And who would be the one? I, I tell everybody that they need to get them a Malcolm. To drive her to tears. He said, if you decide to stay and marry her, you have to promise to take care of her for the rest of your life. And, and, and Malcolm's upheld that promise. When we return, a special tribute to a true KSLA legend. I'm proud to present you with the Landers Dodge Chrysler Jeep Athlete of the Week Trophy. I may dance when we come back. Show me something, mister! For two reasons, I'm still here in Shreveport, Bossier. Number one is, I really love Shreveport, Bossier. Number two is, nobody else ever wanted me. He loved Shreveport. He loved this television station. throw around the term legend and icon pretty loosely. Like, man, that was legendary. That guy's going to be in it. Bob was it. Remembering all the good stuff of 2020 isn't complete without celebrating the life of Bob Griffin, who we lost back in February. Now, Bob, without question, is the good stuff that made television broadcasting here in the Arklatex a part of what it is today. But far beyond the studio, he, if you met this guy even once, you likely had a Bob Griffin story. For me and perhaps many of you, you ran into him on a Friday night at a football game. It was like running into a famous coach or a past player, and you were tempted to ask for a selfie, and he would oblige, even if it was in the middle of a local retail store. The late Bob Griffin was a longtime KSLA sportsman and entertainer. I'm told he even did the weather here. Starting in 1961 in KSLA's infancy, he began hosting a children's program, Bob and His Buddies. Who knew those buddies would grow up through the years right alongside Bob, and then he probably ended up interviewing their kids, and then their grandkids in high school and in college. Some 20 years ago, I worked in radio here in town. We would occasionally run into each other inside the halls of the Radio Ranch. That's what it was called back in the day. Between his occasional TV stories and the late Frank Page's KWKH radio stories, often about Elvis, I was probably too worried about my next paycheck to slow down and smell the legendary roses growing all around me. A couple of years ago, we had a moment to catch up on the night he was inducted into the Emmy Gold Circle, tennis shoes and all, Bob and those tennies. The last few years, I'd see Bob along high school football sidelines, often in that fedora-style hat, trench coat and notepad and pencil. There he is. Caught him on one of my highlights. 
during an airline home game, that pencil no match for the constant drizzle that was refusing to let up. Kind of like how Bob never let up. For nearly 60 years, I know some of you think we meet up with Channel 3 and Channel 6 every once in a while and we duke it out in an alley like in the movie Anchorman. We do, and we usually win. No, seriously, that's a joke. That's not the case. How in the world could Channel 3 ever hate us if smiling Bob Griffin loved us enough to work here for as long as he did? There's nothing but love for the people he worked with for the last decade over there because we were all Bob's buddies. Whether we worked with him, watched him on TV, or hung out with him in the rain. On behalf of the entire KSLA family and all of my good stuff friends, I'm Doug Warner wishing you a happy new year full of the good stuff. just want to confirm the fact, was I not the best, or I'll take that back, the second best eighth grade basketball player you ever played with? <laughs> You're okay. You're okay. I'll give you that. 